In about 50 million years, Mars' largest moon, Phobos, will pass close enough to Mars that the planet's gravity will overcome the forces keeping Phobos together, which will cause the moon to disintegrate. The Phobos debris will eventually form a thin, dark ring system around Mars that will likely last around 80 million years. Phobos itself is very small, just 22 kilometers or 14 miles across. If it weren't orbiting Mars, it would be considered an asteroid. Earth clearly doesn't have a moon like this, and as far as we currently know, it never did. However, asteroids this size are fairly common, and they do sometimes pass close to Earth. If an asteroid this big were to pass too close to Earth at just the right speed and angle, there is a possibility it would meet the same fate as Phobos and become a ring system around Earth. And we found evidence that, 450 million years ago, this happened. There's a possibility that in the ancient past, long before even the dinosaurs, Earth had a ring system. And not only that, it might have also had additional moons. How do we know this? This is all coming from a study that was made available online on September 12, 2024, which I'll link in the description. They find evidence that, 466 million years ago, a ring system around Earth could explain a bunch of observations we made, though there are other explanations I'll get to later. At the time, Earth was in the Ordovician period, and a lot of strange things happened. For about 20 million years, the planet experienced a large cooling event, where the entire planet cooled down by about 8 degrees Celsius. Then, for the next 7 million years, it warmed back up. As well as this, meteorite debris around the time was strangely enriched with materials we really don't expect to be there. The remains of impact craters at the time suggest there may have been an unusually high number of meteor impacts near Earth's equator. All in all, the evidence seems to suggest that there is something going on during the Ordovician, and we don't know what. This study aimed to figure out exactly what was going on, what caused the cooling and warming events, the weird composition of meteorites, and the distribution of craters. They found that the best explanation for all this evidence was an asteroid, roughly about the size of Phobos or the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs, passing inside Earth's Roche limit about 466 million years ago. The Roche limit is essentially the boundary around an object where its own gravity can overpower the forces keeping an object that passes inside the limit together. This causes it to break apart. However, the Roche limit is different for every object. Asteroids that are loose collections of pebbles will break apart easier than ones made of solid rock. That's why Saturn has moons inside its ring system that aren't falling apart, or why the International Space Station or all of our other satellites aren't being destroyed. The ISS is composed of hard metal and held together by artificial means, so the tidal forces coming from Earth can't destroy it. In this scenario, this asteroid wasn't as lucky. It passed somewhere between 10,000 and 22,000 kilometers away from Earth, which, based on the evidence we see, will be close enough to cause the asteroid to break apart. Earth's gravity turns the asteroid into millions and millions of tons of debris, which, due to Earth not being a perfect sphere, eventually causes the debris to settle along an equatorial orbit, eventually forming a ring system. But that's not all. Based on what little evidence we have, we can infer a lot about this ring if it existed. Because ring particles block sunlight from hitting the surface, this could be responsible for the cooling event during the Ordovician. Then, the ring slowly dissipating would allow more sunlight to reach the surface again, resulting in the warming event. Based on how fast Earth cooled and by how much it cooled by, it's possible to guess at how large the rings were and how thick. These rings would have been nowhere near as impressive as Saturn's. Saturn's rings were thousands of times more massive than this hypothetical ring, but it might have been enough to be visible on the surface, or at least cast a shadow on Earth. The same is true of Mars, as the destruction of Phobos would create a dark, dim, and thin ring. The same will be true of Earth. But that doesn't change the fact that this is a ring system, and extremely interesting. But based on what we know, we can infer more than just the presence of rings. The craters on the equator can be explained by ring particles slowly falling down to Earth and impacting the surface. However, there's a gap in the ages of the craters. We can guess that the rings may have stretched all the way to geosynchronous orbit, the area where we currently keep many satellites, and where an object has the same orbital period as Earth's day length. The ages of craters are split into two groups, and there's a gap in the middle. This could be explained by the ring particles falling down to Earth less during that time, so we can assume there was a gap in the rings as well. But gaps don't just form randomly, they have to have a reason, and this gap could have been explained by a moon forming in the region. We see this in Saturn's rings, there are several moons buried in the rings, formed by collecting material from the rings. So, if this is confirmed, Earth, about 455 million years ago, had a second moon. One thousands of times smaller than the moon we have today, smaller than even Phobos, but a moon nonetheless. And there's the possibility of even more moons existing during this time. Beyond geosynchronous orbit, ring material would have been far enough away from Earth to begin coalescing into larger objects. Two possibilities exist for this material. 
it was all either ejected due to various orbital effects, or it coalesced to form additional moonlets. Right now, we don't know which one it is, or if this material even existed. 444 million years ago, this ring, if it existed, began to dissipate. The moonlets, if they existed, were either destroyed or ejected, and the remaining ring material fell down to Earth due to orbital decay. There could have been a process of larger ring particles outside geosynchronous orbit becoming moons, spiraling inward, being torn apart, made into more ring material, which eventually became more moons, in a cycle. Something similar happens with Saturn. But this is not confirmed. Some ring material would have been lost in this process, eventually causing the entire ring system and all its moonlets to be entirely gone by 437 million years ago. If any of this actually happened, it was an extremely rare event. The study suggests that an asteroid becoming a ring around Earth like this might only happen once every 540 million years or more, and the evidence does seem pretty strong. Unfortunately, there are some problems with this idea. One of the strongest arguments against this theory is preservation bias. On Earth 450 million years ago, most land was concentrated on the equator. Most of that land was part of the ancient continent Gondwana, which included parts of South America, Africa, India, and Antarctica. There may have also been some islands that are now part of China, Kazakhstan, and Siberia, and with another large landmass, Laurentia, being made of North America. The majority of this land was all coincidentally located on the equator, with the northern hemisphere having almost no land, and the south having the small landmass Avalonia, made of parts of Canada and Western Europe. When a meteor falls to Earth, it's more likely to form a crater if it hits land. If it hits the ocean, it's likely the entire meteor will disintegrate before it reaches the sea floor. So, given the fact that there is barely any land away from the equator during this time, of course there seems to be more craters near the equator. That's the only place they could really form. As well as this, the closer you get to the poles, the more ice there is. Craters closer to the poles could have been eroded by glaciers, again making the equator seem to have more craters by comparison. Not because more meteors fell there, but because the rest of the world either didn't have the capability to form craters, or eroded them away faster. This is a very strong piece of evidence against the rings existing, and we would need to do a lot more searching for craters to confirm this. Much deeper studies for crater remains in the Sahara, India, and South America would be especially helpful, as those were the areas most above water during the time. India and South America were located next to one another and close to the equator during this time, while the Sahara was lower. If we find very few craters from this time period in the Sahara, but a ton in India, for example, then that would be strong evidence that the rings did exist and this isn't preservation bias. But right now, the data needed to totally confirm or disprove these rings does not exist. Also, not much is known about Gondwana itself. Because it existed so long ago, we can't find many rocks that we can confirm were a part of it. There's also an alternative theory that says rings aren't necessary at all. In this scenario, a disruption in the asteroid belt occurred, causing the breakup of a large asteroid. Fragments of this asteroid then hit Earth. The dust from these impacts would explain the cooling event, the crater age distribution, and the subsequent warming event. So, while there is evidence that Earth used to have rings, there's also just as much evidence that it didn't. Right now, no definitive conclusions can be made, we need a lot more data. If we ever want to confirm this, we're going to need to conduct detailed and thorough searches for the remains of craters in the Sahara, India, and South America, something that would take a ton of money and resources, and be especially difficult in the Sahara where there's little infrastructure, and in South America where there's a massive rainforest in the way. But no matter what, we know something big happened 450 million years ago, and it was likely asteroid-related. Either something disrupted and destroyed a large rock in the asteroid belt, or an asteroid passed too close to Earth and became a ring system. We can't currently say which one is more likely to have happened, let alone which one definitely did. We'll simply have to keep searching for more evidence to confirm or disprove these theories. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.